Oh. Hi everyone, it's Luke here and welcome back to a, another video. You join me today in Switzerland. We're in Zurich. Uh, we've actually been here for a couple of days, haven't we? Yeah. Um, but our plans kind of didn't really go to plan uh, and kind of fell through last minute. So we're actually leaving Zurich now. We're doing a little road trip through Switzerland. We've got this trusty hire car, which is a nice little, little mini. Mini, mini Cooper, <laughs> which is nice and snazzy. Um, so yeah, like I said, we're actually leaving Zurich today. Uh, we've been here for three days? Two days? Yeah. Three days? Yeah. Something like that. Um, lovely place. Definitely going to come back, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, so nice. Um, and hopefully pursue those plans which actually fell through in the first place. Um, but today we're heading uh, about an hour's east of Zurich um, to a place called Romanshorn. Now, um, hang on, two seconds. <laughs> driving on the wrong side of the road is still very confusing. Um, so yeah, we're driving to Romanshorn to a place called the Autobau. Uh, and it's basically a private collection or museum um, which has some serious cars in it, yeah. isn't it? Um, so we're gonna get some breakfast and then hit the road to Romanshorn. So there we have it, we've successfully made it to the Autobahn Museum. What a journey, it's only about an hour, but the roads around here are just so, so nice, even in a standard little Mini Cooper. But anyway, we just bought our tickets, and I think in here is automotive heaven, so I'm gonna waste no further time and head on inside. to the Autobau. I cannot believe I have not been here before. Um, I mean, just look at that backdrop behind me. This is just one of multiple halls here at the museum. I'm gonna spin this around and do my best to run through all of these ones in here, but pff, mind blown. Okay, so let's make a start in my favorite section, which looks to be, well, the Ferrari section. So first off, we have this yellow 512M, basically the hardcore variant of the 512. You don't often see them, especially in yellow, so that looks very nice. Uh, we then have a 330 GTC, absolutely stunning car, finished in a lovely, lovely spec, actually. Red interior, obviously all that wooden trim wooden steering all of that and then a very dark blue exterior yes we have a 220 that's not a ferrari so we'll get back to that uh, a 488 coupe this one um is in fact one of the 30 odd 35 odd which was made for the ferrari uh, 70th anniversary celebrations so that's quite cool not often you see uh, silver calipers and it's also got some funky red inserts in the interior. Then things get a little bit crazy. We have a Rosso Corsa LaFerrari, and well, out of the kind of 50 odd which I've seen today, I have never seen one with a color matched painted roof. So this is my first one. Um, it's crazy how how rare the LaFerraris are with kind of like all, all one color uh, without the black or carbon roof. And albeit it is really refreshing and nice to see it, I still would have, well, I'd have a carbon roof really rather than the gloss black roof, but it makes it look a lot more squat when that is painted in black. But I mean, this thing, well, it's very red really. I mean, the interior is red. The dash is, well, half red. The exterior is, well, very red as well. I'm surprised it hasn't got red sense caps, um, but I don't think this has much carbon actually, because on the laugh you can really go to town with the carbon. Uh, no carbon rear uh, bumper and diffuser, no carbon mirrors, no carbon roof, like I said, and no carbon on the front splitter. But either way, it's a laugh. You can never tire of seeing one of these 963 brake horsepower from both a naturally aspirated V12 and a hybrid curse system. Absolutely bonkers car. Ferrari, you're gonna have to do some serious bits to try and improve this. We then have an all-time favorite of mine, the F12 TDF, one of 799 in the world. This finished in the launch spec, which is triple layer yellow. 770 brake horsepower from, again, a naturally aspirated V12. And fun fact, this has vaguely the same engine as the LAF. Uh, but when uh, Ferrari's production team were developing this car, they realized that the engine was 
even more powerful than the laugh, so they had to down tune it because otherwise laugh customers would probably get a bit annoyed that they've just made this a little bit better than their ultimate car. Still yet, well, as far as I know, no one has kind of tuned this um, to kind of bring out that power, which is what it was made for. Um, but stunning, stunning car, no stripe, uh, kind of simple spec, but oh, so, so nice. We then have a couple of 365. Now this one is basically the original Lusso. This is a GTC4 uh, 365, if that makes any sense. So it's a four seater, two plus two, uh, the slightly more practical variant. And this is the 365 GTB4. Uh, I believe this one is quite rare because it's got the plexiglass front. Utterly, utterly beautiful car one of the greatest classics. We then have the legendary F40. You can't have a collection of this caliper and not have one of these. Finished in the traditional spec, the Rosso Corsa uh, with the red interior. Such a cool car. I mean, just look through the rear there. And actually, I'm gonna to touch on this very briefly. Uh, in the time of me recording and probably uploading this video, uh, the new Ferrari F8 Tributo has been revealed. And I think from the back minus the wing, it really has taken a lot of inspiration from the F40. We've got that kind of slatted uh, plexiglass rear engine bay. We've got the four lights at the back. It's actually really nice to see that they've gone back to the four lights at the back, but F40, what can you say? Twin turbo V8 just heaven and we have a dino and back to the 512m now it's not just ferraris in here so i'm going to whiz over here we've got some old alphas it really is a bit of everything in here as you'll see later on in the video this one looks quite cool nice blue uh, and then we have an 8c at the end which is all i really know about don't really know much about these not gonna lie i8 roadster another old little bmw in there Maserati 3500 GTI Superleggera, according to that. Uh, new NSX, that's cool. And then, oh, hello, Bugatti EB110. This is not the Supersport variant. I think there was about 30 odd of the Supersports made, um, but this really where Bugatti found their feet. Also, they had the pre-war cars like the, the Type 57 and stuff like that, but this kind of was the start of something extremely special. Um, and Bugatti now are one of the greatest uh, car manufacturers around. Let's have a little peek inside. We've got a manual gearbox, split windows, almost McLaren F1-esque. We've got that glorious V12. I mean, this thing is an absolute beast. And with the Chirons and the Veyrons and whatnot around now, you do not see these things. So it's so, so cool to see one and just sat here in all of this amazing company as well. We've got a Di Tommaso Pantera, very James Bond-esque. Uh, Vanquish, some old Porsches. This is cool. What's this? Is it a Honda? Never seen one of those before. See, this is the thing when you visit places like this. You see things which you have no idea what they are. I tucked in the corner. I definitely know what this is. Carrera GT, one of the best sounding cars of all time. Naturally aspirated V10 manual gearbox and a removable roof panel. This really is one of the greats. This one finished in quite a traditional spec actually, the GT Silver with the brown interior. But whilst on the subject of Porsche, let's head upstairs because I think there's some sort of 70th anniversary Porsche celebration going on up there. Okay, so we'll get to the Porsches in a minute, but Celine S7. I have never seen one of these things in my entire life. America's first attempt, I suppose, at a proper supercar. And this, this, this is, I think this is kind of a modern, slightly more modern interpretation of the Jaguar XJ220. Huge thing, I mean, look at the length of it. This thing's powered by a twin turbo V8 pushing well over 1,000 brake horsepower. Look at the louvres, they're on every single panel. It is a bonkers looking thing, finishing like a really deep red, even though it looks orange on camera. Such a cool car. It's just one of those things which you just never see outside of America, especially. We'll look at that little roof snorkel up there as well. So, so cool. But anyway, onto the Porsches. Uh, let's have a little look. Okay, here we go. Wow. Okay, 2.7 RS, white and red. So, so cool. One of my favorite 
Porsche Classics. Got that iconic ducktail spoiler. We've got the Dalfas down there. The HC, nice. Uh, ooh, mustard yellow, interesting. These old Porsches are so, so pretty. Ooh, we've got little fog lights as well. Look at that. Irish green at 912 from the 60s. A 356C, again, finished in a very bright and garish colour. And then to finish off the lineup, we have a 356A. How pretty is this? Wow. Anyway, going back into some more modern times, we have a Gen 1 GT3 RS, lava orange. Rarely see these things now with the Gen 2 out. So, so cool. I mean, just look at that stance there. And then to finish off the Porsches, we have a 50th anniversary 911. Anyway, there's plenty of other things in here to have a look at, including a little mirror over in the corner. I think that's, a, is that an SV? I need some closer inspection on this. No, it's not. Okay, so the SV uh, doesn't have these eyelashes. That's one way which you can kind of uh, distinguish the two. Uh, quite an interesting spec, actually. Yellow with the gold wheels. Absolutely love these things. Anyway, I'm going to head more over towards this direction uh, because, oh, hello. 300SL, 300SL Cabriolet. Some old, is that a Pagoda? I'm really not too knowledgeable on my old Mercedes, I'm not going to lie. But moving on from that, we have the latest generation and the original A110. It's so, so cool to see uh, both generations together. I love how they've kind of kept uh, quite distinguished uh, design cues from the fog lights at the front through to the later car finishing pretty much the same color actually so so cool and then over to this corner we have another car which i've never seen this is the twin turbo vector w8 i mean have you seen a more ridiculous looking car <laughs> i don't know much about these things how many were made or anything but i mean it is a bit of a doorstop isn't it i mean it's huge little Vector W8 Twin Turbo badge down there. Again, bonkers looking thing. The most unpractical production car around, I'd say. I mean, just look at that rear end. Absolutely crazy. But in the corner we have 2017 or 18 or 19, whatever they are, Ford GT. I mean, some of the lines of this thing, we've got that flying buttress so you can see right through the car. It's such a cool shaped car. Got that V6 EcoBoost engine in the back. Slightly controversial when this car first came out compared to the supercharged V8. Um, in fact, I, I don't think it's actually possible to engine swap one of these. I think Hennessy, I heard some rumors that they were gonna do it, but it's not possible. This one is fitted with the uh, optional Akrapovich exhaust. The first one I've seen with that fitted. Uh, obviously we're not gonna be able to hear the car today, but it's interesting to see that. We don't have the carbon wheels, but I personally think that these look a little bit better. Sadly, not sat down in race mode, but still such a cool car to see. One of the most hyped cars at the moment. And then of course, over here, we have the 05 GT finished in white with the blue stripes. Let's have a little peek in there. Definitely bigger than the V6 to say the least. But anyway, that is the first haul of this place. I am blown away and a little bit out of breath <laughs> at all these cars. I mean. This, the variety, we've got a Ford GT, we've got a Vector, we've got a Celine S7, and then we've got a TDF downstairs, obviously. <laughs> Absolutely phenomenal place. Wow. <laughs> okay, so this is like the, what, like racer section? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 917K, 330 GTO, not to be mistaken from a 250 GTO. In fact, let's go have a look at that first. There we go, before you all kill me in the comments. 330 GTO. Now this is basically a modified 250 GTO chassis. It's, well, it's very recognizable. It's very similar to a 250 GTO. Equally as valuable and rare, um, but just not quite a 250 GTO. It still wears the GTO name, so it's obviously still one of the greatest Ferraris ever. Um, I believe because it was modified and not a 250 GTO, it was forced to uh, race in like a prototype series. It did race, uh, similar to the 250, um, 
but I think it was forced to go into a lower class, um, which you'd kind of understand. But anyway, that is special. Uh, so, well, so is everything in here, really. Got a Gallardo uh, cup car. Uh, oh, is this a BB Competizione? It is. Look at me with the knowledge. I tell you what, the variety in this place is, is nuts, isn't it? <laughs> That's a shocked Chloe. <laughs> There's more. Oh my. Okay. Wowzers. <gasps> what a place. This is absolutely nuts. <laughs> you know what, that sums it up very, very well. I like that. Wow. As I walk around this place, the question I keep on asking myself is why have I not been here before? The variety is nuts. We're now in all these race cars and of different eras and an MC12 Corsa in the corner. Is that what you're photographing? Yes. Of course it is. <laughs> So there we go, that is a well, fairly quick walk around of the phenomenal Autobau Museum here in Romanshorn. I am unfortunately going to have to cut the video short here because I have quite a tight schedule now, uh, seeing as all my Zurich plans didn't really go to plan, I've now got to catch up basically. Uh, so I've got a couple of hours drive in the Mighty Mini, um, so I'm going to have to unfortunately leave this place, but count my word, I'm coming back because what a place and if you are ever in switzerland in like the zurich area then come down here it only opens on sundays which is a bit strange um but come on down you will not be disappointed um i mean i just find myself wandering around this place absolutely incredible anyway i'm gonna have to end the video here hope you guys have enjoyed it be sure to leave a like if you did and make sure you're subscribed for all the adventures still to come <laughs>